Today, we're going to begin our case study on Italy and Germany in the Second World War, uh, starting with, with the Italian state uh, through its rise uh, of fascism in the 1920s. Uh, we, we're going to begin with uh, talking about Italy um, just becoming a brand new nation um, in the 1860s. Uh, it's a unified nation, but despite this unification, there's still great division within the Italian state and, and not much of a, a, a national identity at this early point. We've got divisions in Italy from like northern Italy to southern Italy. We see divisions between the, the upper classes and the working class. We see divisions between those that want a more secular government and those that want the government more tied to the Roman Catholic Church. And, and this divided union will only be exacerbated by the, by the First World War and Italy's experience in it. Uh, Italy suffers tremendous losses uh, during the war as, as it joins on the, the side of the Entente powers, fighting largely against Austria-Hungary in its north. Um, when the war came to an end, Italy had lost over a million war dead. Um, and many Italians will feel that the gains that Italy gets in its north and along the Adriatic uh, coast uh, um, on the Balkan Peninsula will not be equal to the costs that Italy expended. And this is going to grow um, uh, political divisions even further within Italy. This leads us to the development of the fascist party in Italy. Um, as frustrations with the outcome of World War I will grow, Benito Mussolini, a, a minor political figure um, through the war years, he was a former member of the Socialist Party, worked for their newspaper, but as he came out in support of Italy being in World War I, um, he was, was ousted from the Socialists and ended up starting a new political ideology, new political party in Italy called the National Fascist Party. And, and the ideology of this fascist group is, is a promotion of nationalism. Um, and, and remember, this is a promotion of nationalism in Italy when much of the rest of the world after World War I is moving towards a more international mindset. Um, dictatorship in Italy and the support of a one party political state. You know, this feeling that multiple political parties divides a nation. And so you don't want that division when you wanna have some national unity, you can only have one political party in the state. Um, the fascist party supports a glorification of war, the feeling that war is a national good. These are the kinds of ideas that we, we saw a lot before World War I uh, began, but the fascist party in Italy is going to continue to support this glorification of war, war as a national good um, for the Italian people. Uh, they are anti-communist and they are anti-internationalist. So these internationalist movements that we see growing through the 1920s, the fascists in Italy will stand against them. Uh, now we will see um, this this growth in fascism happen pretty rapidly in the uh, in the 1920s. Uh, there's anger over over the war settlements that that Italy had to deal with. Uh, there's an economic crisis in Italy following the First World War. Unemployment is high, and when when people are economically frustrated, they are more likely to move towards radical political ideas. Um, America has a part to play in this, just like we did with with regard to uh, Japanese sentiments after World War. One, uh, we begin to put some serious restrictions on immigration in the 1920s, making it harder for poor Italians looking for jobs, looking for opportunities to emigrate out of, uh, of Italy. Um, the Bolshevik Revolution in, in the Soviet Union or in Russia is going to lead to fears, not only in Italy, but in other parts of the world, that um, there's, there's going to be communist expansion in, in Italy itself. And then the, the fascists in Italy will get some support from the Catholic Church, um, who feels that a fascist government might be more supportive to, to Catholic um, uh, beliefs and Catholic ideas than the current secular government. This comes to a head in October of 1922 with an event known as the March on Rome. Um, the, the government in Italy, which was a coalition government made up of many different political parties, could not suppress the growing street violence led by and supported by fascist party members. Uh, socialists and communists call for a general strike within Italy uh, to protest uh, economic conditions. Um, and the fascist parties making calls for law and order. Um, that's going to grow its support, especially from middle classes that weren't previously very supportive. Um, 
In October of 1922, the fascist party led by Benito Mussolini and their, their black shirts. These are fascist party members who literally wear black shirts and they take up arms and they march onto Rome in an attempt to seize the government. The King of Italy, a guy named Victor Emmanuel III, is going to side with Benito Mussolini in hopes of avoiding greater violence and possibly his own overthrow. Um, and he will name Benito Mussolini the Prime Minister of Italy, despite the fascist party only having a small number of, of seats in the Italian parliament. From here, Mussolini is going to move to consolidate his power to become the dictator Mussolini. Uh, his government is going to receive an early vote of confidence from the rest of, of the, uh, the parliament and gains emergency powers to reform uh, the administrative um, uh, government and taxation in Italy. In February of 1923, the fascist party grows as the nationalist party in Italy will, uh, will merge with them and join. In July of 1923, the Acerbo law is passed. This is a law in, in Italy that will allow the political party that receives the most votes in an election, what we call a plurality of the vote, because nobody, there's too many parties for anybody to receive a majority. So the party that receives the plurality or the most votes in an election will receive two thirds of the parliamentary seats. Uh, which is essentially going to make that party with the plurality uh, able to do whatever it wants in government. On April 24th um, of the same year, 1924 uh, here, um, the elections, the next elections will be marred by political violence from guys like the black shirts throughout Italy. And um, we're going to see the Italian fascists get that plurality of votes. And so because of the Acerbo law, then they are going to receive 67% of parliament. Uh, so they're going to go from a very tiny fraction of the government in Italy to now dominating and able to pass anything that they desire. Um, on June 24th, uh, a liberal political leader will speak out publicly in, in the Italian parliament against the fascists and the political violence that was seen in the election. Um, after he does this, Giacomo Mattiati is going to be murdered in Italy, and many fingers are going to be pointed at Benito Mussolini and the fascist party for that murder. In January, 20, uh, January of 1925, Benito Mussolini will proclaim himself Il Duce, the head of government and the Duke of Fascism. Um, and in that same year, um, a new government law is going to be passed, uh, thanks in part to the fascists having two thirds of the parliament, called the Law on Powers of the Head of Government, which will give Mussolini supreme executive power and only the King of Italy could remove him from power. From here, he is now going to become the dictator Benito Mussolini. Political parties and trade unions in Italy will be banned. Uh, these are things that the fascists believe divide countries. They divide people politically. They divide workers uh, from their, their management. The press will be taken over by the government. There will be no free press in Italy, no critiques of the government. Elected officials will be replaced by political appointments. Uh, a secret police uh, organization will be formed called the OVRA, and these are going to be uh, the uh, police, police officers that will be looking for any critiques against the government to silence those. Um, jury trials will be ended in, um, in uh, Italy, so only politically appointed judges can uh, make decisions in these, these trials. Um, the death penalty will be expanded to include crimes, uh, political crimes um, or challenges of the government. And young men are going to be organized, young men and boys will be organized into a fascist youth movement um, in, in Italy. And so now Benito Mussolini has got his one party dictatorship. Um, he's got his fascist government. And in our next video, we're going to talk about what he's going to do with that new fascist government. We'll see you next time.